In a statement issued via the Twitter handle of Femi Fani Kayade, no fewer than 22 senators on the platform of the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, are threatening to decamp to the People's Democratic Party because they have been denied their tickets to return to the Senate. It was learned that the number of APC senators has been reduced to 62 by virtue of those senators who failed to secure return tickets to the chamber. Now, joining us to discuss this are Professor Chris Mokobia, Jr., and, of course, he is the convener of Country First Movement, uh, Abuja. And, of course, Tunji Abdulhamid is a legal practitioner and a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Pleasure is mine. All right. Thank you for having me. Great. I'm going to start with you, Professor Mokobia. You are obviously... Uh, a, a member of the APC, and um, you were at the pr party primaries that held at the Eagle Square uh, some time ago. Um, is there any truth or reality or facts backing um, the tweet that was put out by Femi Fani Kayadi, who is also a member of the All Progressive Congress? Let me say very importantly that uh, the development in the All Progressive Congress is very worrisome, troubling, and disheartening. And I say this because uh, the many problems that attended the primaries from the state level to the federal level are still bothers the party. I'm aware that yesterday, the chairman of the party, uh, Elijah Damo, did say that uh, they will reach out to all the agreed parties and try to mend fences and ensure that people do not leave the party. But as it were, beyond the politics and the politics of it, um, there are people who are not happy, not only because they didn't get the ticket to return to the Senate, but largely because the, the choice of candidates who did who are replacing them at the senatorial level, at the House of Reps level, at the gubernatorial level, and indeed the presidential level, um, is something that borders their the carapace of their mind, their moral their morality. I, I am one of those who are finding it difficult to side and or support the presidential candidate of the party, for instance, and and you have a million of people in my shoes, then don't forget that the Senate president, if you like, wants to return to the Senate. And there are questions as to whether he can come back to the Senate because the person that he put as a holder, if you like, is unwilling to relinquish the ticket. So I think that um, going forward, the party has a lot to do to breach the caps, to mend the fences, assuage tempers, and if you like, create some peace. Yes. But how far and how well they can achieve that is the question for the morrow. I, I'm curious because... This the, the the statement that you started with um, that the the chairman was going to um, reach out to those who are aggrieved and try to mend fences. This is something that we hear very often, but half the time, these so-called fences never get mended. Um, do you think the party understands the graveness of what is happening? Because if if twenty two of its senior members, or let's say strong members, uh, are agitating to move, which is something that is not very um, out of the blues when it comes to the Nigerian political space. Uh, how, how serious do you think the party is taking what's happening within it? No, I didn't get the last part of that question. I'm asking, how serious do you think the party uh, is taking what's happening within the circles of, you know, whether it be at the states or at the federal level? Do you think that they understand the, gra the graveness of what's going on and not just paying lip service to it? No, clearly the party is not treating the situation with kid loves. The, the, the party is seriously looking at it. The chairman is already reaching out 
to, to the leadership of the party at the Senate level. Uh, they're, they're making some rapprochements. Like I said, what is uh, worrisome is how well and how effective, efficient, and effectual, if you like, uh, that process would be. I, I am particularly concerned because across board, the the way the party conducted primaries um, across across the different stratification of leadership is is worrisome, and that's why people are concerned. That's why the senators are threatening to leave. But you know what? Largely with politicians. There are a lot of things that are unpredictable. They might, after the rapprochement by the party leadership, um, quit from defecting. But what is important as I talk to you is the fact that the party is not taking it lightly. The party is seriously reaching out to the, their members at the level of the Senate and the, and the, and the, and the House of Representatives. And then um, we who feel a bit uncomfortable with the choice of candidates at the level of the presidency are also concerned. And you have a lot of people who are leaving the party and who are saying that they would rather support the candidate of the Labour Party. Some are saying that they are obedient. Some are saying that they would rather support the candidate of the PDP. So I think that the whole lot that the All Progressive Congress has to put together. It has to reach out to, to the party tendencies across board and then show commitment to the urgency of now because Nigerians want a new republic, a leader who will fix, reset, refocus, redefine, and rebuild our country. Okay. Tunji, there are many pundits, there are many analysts who had said before now, um, back in 2021, uh, that they see the APC imploding. A lot of other people said they were going to, that the APC was going to rise from the dust like a phoenix. Uh, many also uh, queried how the APC even came into being and what their blueprint or their purpose was, which was to wrest power from the PDP as opposed to uh, a plan that would regenerate itself. But did you see this happening? Did you preempt that the, the APC would be at this point? Knowing again at the back of your mind that this is how the political space in Nigeria works in terms of defections. Uh, of course, yes. I, 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 I appreciate this for now. Because uh, if you look at how the party came about and uh, the way they have been operating since uh, 2015, you must be expecting this. Because uh, it has been about a uh, personal interest, uh, not really about uh, the nation. And uh, you see, a party, a party that came into power in 2015, and up to date, not be able to constitute a, a part of trustees to be able to even look at issues that the uh, major organ of the party. It shows clearly that things are not uh, working well. The party. So I expect that it may happen and happen today. It, it, what is happening is a confirmation that the primary. The internet democracy in APC is not is not fair. Yeah. That is why you are you see most people uh, are angry and they're not in, they're not uh, uh, wanting to leave the the, the party. Uh, it's not it's not unexpected for me. I appreciate uh, it and uh, I think it's serious for them because um, the if a number of things that we are we are hearing move that will, that will have a serious effect on the on the presidential uh, uh, what's it called action. So I, I, I think it's a serious one, and that's why the chairman is moving from one place to another. I'm doing, having met them to ensure that they they did not go. But I think to me it may be it may be a bit too late because uh, it has been done. You can't uh, recall and then ask those who have got tickets to to, to, to get and give, give it back to them. Because the major ang the major anger is that they, are, they they were not they were not returned, and they, they there's no way there's nothing to pacify them than to give them back the ticket without the ticket. Be able to, I mean, very too, uh, too little and too late for them to 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 settle the. It's a serious issue, and uh, I, I think uh, the it's not, not unexpected. It's unexpected because uh, it appears APC has no uh, people that, that leaders can call people to order or can even uh, 
uh, uh, ensure that little dispute is not a, a major uh, issue. Nobody is doing that in the party. Everybody is like, uh, I am in charge, and uh, it is not too good for the party. And that's why they are where we are, where they are today. I am not surprised. Anyway. Interestingly, um, let's take, for example, the governor of Crash River State uh, ran for Senate, also ran for president. None of those, he wasn't able to win any of those offices, unfortunately. Um, there are also states that are still having internal problems. Again, another state, River State, is yet to be able to um, deliver itself from um, the problems, the internal crisis that it's had, which has at the center of it um, the minister, former minister uh, of transportation and a former senator of the Federal Republic uh, uh, from, um, you know, uh, an imbroglio of sorts that they've had. They've had, in 2019, they had all their tickets cancelled. And then we're here again in 2022. The party is still unable to go beyond the, the situation which is between Senator Magnus Abbey and um, um, the minister, Rotimi Amici. I mean, Kwara State also has the same issue. And if all of these states are having these kinds of issues that are yet to be dealt with, and then, and then, just like Professor Mokobia um, said, there are also issues within the party where certain people seem to want to be um, looking in the direction of the Labour Party. There are those who say they're not um, okay with who emerged as the flag bearer of the APC. And so there are so many um, interests that might not necessarily um, be that which the party wants. Um, how easy in the next few months Will it be for the APC to be able to mop up this? And of course, let's not forget, on the other hand, they're yet to give us a, a vice presidential candidate, which is also waiting in the winds. It will be difficult, if not impossible, for them to be able to go out of this. Uh, because uh, when you don't have a structure that will stop it, in other, in, in other words, the internal mechanism will stop it in the APC. I'm not even sure if there's a sense. So there is no, apart from the and if I'm making reference to the president, whenever the United States follow, nobody, nobody calling anybody to order. And the president is not even interested in uh, meddling to anything. The president is just taking a look and looking at them. The president would rather wait the issue to uh, the, the issue become a general issue before he comes into it. So I uh, don't have a mechanism on how, how to resolve issues or internal mechanism. Uh, internal, it's definitely difficult for you to, to do part of this kind of situation. I don't know who and who will put them together and who will initiate the process of uh, uh, ensuring that this could not go. They would, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not surprised. None of them may not go, but definitely some of them will go because uh, you are thinking already. You see, the senator representing the president uh, uh, constituent already has already moved. Other people have already moved. And uh, it may be, it may be, you are just thinking before the end of, before 2023, not so many other people who think the police there didn't think that people who want to achieve their interest. Policy is about interest. And most people, when they realize that their interests will not be served where they are, they will not, not practicing a policy of ideology in Nigeria. And I will not be, and I'm not surprised that anybody that is not qualified will move from any uh, party. So I, I think it's difficult for APC, if not impossible, to be able to resolve this issue. Bearing in mind that they lack uh, the candidate to, to, to settle the kind of crisis within the party. No structure in this. No, apart from the executive, uh, executive there, is no, there is no other. Uh, 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 a functional structure that where where you can be taught. No idea that say come together. Everybody is just working on zone. They are all people like we are the one of the people that are now. We are not we are nobody. So as far as I'm concerned, it's difficult, even possible for them to live out of this. And it may be a benefit for to labor party or PDP or that other party in that regard. If it, if it, the, the, the issue of um, Section 84 is also did not also help matter in that regard. Because uh, they, 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 by virtue of uh, the mistake or error from the assembly, they put themselves for the good and then the other them could not, could not vote. And uh, it, it did not put the structure of the fact in that governance, although people control the party within the state. And that's why the governors were able to ensure that people they support or uh, became the uh, of the party. So uh, I think uh, what the party needs is to ensure a uh, proper structure of internal uh, mechanism to resolve a issue with them. Without that, they'll be able to pay. It, 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 as far as I'm concerned, it's a bit late.
Coach Van Sauri for the, the game. Okay. Finally, Professor Mokopia, I'm coming back to you. Um, just as I said, um, the, the APC had a rocky start this year. I mean, we saw, even up, up, up until last year, we saw the issue of um, party leadership and um, sudden people taking over unceremoniously. It's been a rocky start. Uh, but then, surprisingly, the presidential primaries held. And I'm wondering, if people were not okay with what happened or what transpired, why did they even vote? Why did they cast their votes in that regard? I mean, people voted, I saw that, but it was mostly more on the side of the person who got the flag. Um, if people were not convenient with it, why did they not call it out instead of moving away now? Like, apart from the senators who are moving away from, the, who intend to move away. Like I mentioned to Tunji, there are problems in different states within the parties that may not enable them to win elections at those levels. And if the party does not win the elections at the state levels, how would they be able to carry the day at the federal level? Are you worried about an implosion within the party going forward? Well, if I got it correctly, uh, what I must say is that the party, like every other party, must put its house together. Um, with 2023 20, ahead of us, the politics, the issues, the challenge, the urgency of now, and the expectations of the Nigerian people for a new republic, a new tendency, where great ideas, rather than the normal things we've been told, will predominate our politics. I, I say this advisedly, because if you look at the states, across the states, um, you just saw the last election in, in the kitty, and, and then you have every other state looking for what Russia is next. The challenge of the Nigerian people is for better life, is for issues to dominate the discourse rather than individuals and perhaps parties. So, uh, I think that that is exactly why the chairman of the APC, for instance, did say yesterday that beyond the victory in LTT, the Nigeria, the party must understand the challenge of now, must understand the urgency of now, must understand that from the local government level to the federal level, there are issues that border the Nigerian people. And predominantly, the welfare and the well-being of the Nigerian people should be the summum bottom. I say this advisedly because whether you have 41 million members of the APC or 28 million members of the PDP, what we cannot take away from our collective discourse as a nation is that poverty is not partisan, is that hunger is not partisan that insecurity is not partisan. All that borders the Nigerian estate and the Nigerian people is beyond political parties. It's indiscriminate of political tendencies. So when we discuss these issues, that's why I align with those who are saying that the APC must understand that it has a fundamental challenge on its hand. The PDP must understand the urgency of now. You know, I listened to Governor Bafeki of the Doe State when they did a post-mortem of what happened in the Kitty State. And he said simply that for the PDP to have come a distant third, that the PDP and indeed the APC must understand that in every home in this country, there are young people, young girls, young boys, young men, young women, women and men who identify themselves as obedient is a fundamental challenge whether those who believe that Nigeria will continue the way it's always been realize that or not it is the urgency of now mm. and then beyond that the APC must also realize that safe and accept it puts its house in order 
it will not only come a distant second, it may just come a distant third. Wow. Because with people running away from the party on account of the way the primary was handled, and with the issues and the urgency of now, detail the performance of the federal government, as you and I talk, you perhaps do not have fuel in your car. Hmm. As you and I talk, you perhaps do not have electricity at home. As you and I talk, you are perhaps a victim of one issue of insecurity or another. So the urgency of now is far beyond an over-partisanship. The time has come for that resolve to permeate every structure of politics in Nigeria. We must understand okay. that Nigerians are asking for a new deal, a new tendency, a new republic, a new emotions, and a new passion in leadership. All right. It is not just uh, business as usual. It will not be a rule for the big parties in 2023. We all want the best for our country. I am still, as I talk to you, a Kakari member of the APC. But primarily, my emotions and sentiments are increasingly by the day becoming obedient. Well, um, on that note, we have to go. Unfortunately, time is not on our side. But I want to uh, thank you, Professor uh, Mokobia, uh, Chris Mokobia, who is the convener of Country First Movement Abuja, and Tunji Abdulhamid, who is a legal practitioner and, of course, a political analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Unfortunately, time is not on our side. The pleasure is mine. Thank you, man. All right. Well, that's the show tonight. Uh, we will be back tomorrow as we wrap things up for the week. But we'll still be talking about the big stories in the political scene in Nigeria and, of course, across the African continent. I am Mary Anakon. Have a good evening. <laughs>